Our scripture uh, reading this morning is uh, the last uh, segment of uh, Paul's letter to the Galatians. Uh, we're looking at chapter 6. We're picking up in verse uh, 11 and reading to the end of that, uh, of that chapter. See what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. Those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised keep the law, yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast about your circumcision in the flesh. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Teddy Roosevelt, uh, the 26th president of the United States, uh, was known for his uh, outgoing, forceful, assertive uh, personality. He's the one who walked softly but carried a big stick, by golly. Teddy Roosevelt. He loved jokes. He loved a good joke, and he especially loved jokes where he was the... The source, the, uh, at his own personal expense, like the joke that says, uh, Roosevelt, on his first day in heaven, went to St. Peter and said, Peter, your choir is weak, inexcusably weak. You need to reorganize it at once. So St. Peter assigned Roosevelt the task of organizing. See, that's what happens. You point something out, you find yourself in a position of, okay, now you're in charge of that. So Peter said, Roosevelt, you take care of it. And he says, well, the first thing I'm going to need, he said, I'm going to need 10,000 sopranos. Okay. I'm going to need 10,000 altos and 10,000 tenors. And Peter said, is that all? And he said, yeah. He said, well, what about basses? He says, I'll sing bass. <laughs> Think about that. I'll sing bass. One of Roosevelt's children, in fact, said about him after his death, Father always wanted to be the bride at every wedding and the corpse at every funeral. He wanted to be the, the center, the center of attention. Well, sort of that me first and look at me, that, that subject of boasting is right here at the center of this uh, closing uh, segment of uh, Paul's uh, letter to the, uh, to the Galatians. Uh, first of all, he is uh, very critical of the boasting that was going on by those who opposed him. Uh, he said, uh, well, they're, they're, may, trying to, they're trying to make a good showing in the flesh. They're trying to avoid persecution by others in this world. They're trying to get credit from God or from others of like mind for the influence that they have had. They're trying to get credit for what they have done. They're looking to boast. But Paul said, but when it comes to me, he said, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone was worthy and in a position to have been able to boast about himself, it certainly, certainly should have been, could have been the Apostle Paul. But rather than boasting about himself, he said, I want to put the focus on Jesus Christ. What Jesus Christ has done. Not what I have done, but what Jesus has done for me. And in particular, what Jesus has done for me on the cross. And as he goes on, he describes some of the very significant changes that have taken place in his life 
because of his faith and because of his devotion to Jesus Christ, to the message of the cross. And as we look at this this morning, I think we see in there that our lives, your life, my life can be changed. Also, when we put our faith, we put our trust in the powerful message of the cross of Jesus Christ. First, let me say that because of the cross, well, that's, that's the subject of the sermon. <laughs> because of the cross, your life can be changed when you understand what Jesus Christ has done for you. What we can understand what Jesus Christ has done for us. The result is our salvation. Richard DeHaan was the successor of uh, M.R. DeHaan, who was the founder of the Radio Bible Class. Now, that may not mean a whole lot to all of you, but they're the publishers of the little devotional book, the other little devotional book, Our Daily Bread, the more evangelical, Baptist-oriented uh, daily devotional book, but uh, Our Daily Bread. And he told the story in there one time of an old crotchety old man who lived in this, old, this little town. His name was Mr. Klein. And no one liked Mr. Klein. No one could get along with Mr. Klein. Nothing was good enough for Mr. Klein. He was the town's Scrooge. And no one cared for or about Mr. Klein. Even the little children in the town taunted Mr. Klein when they saw him walking down the street and made up little rhymes to insult Mr. Klein. Well, apparently one Sunday evening, this is back in the era when Sunday night church was still going on, Mr. Klein was out taking his Sunday evening walk about town. It was a very warm summer night, and this was before air conditioning was prevalent. The windows of the church building were open, and Mr. Klein, as he's walking past, could hear the singing that was going on inside the building. He heard them singing the words of an old hymn that go, the hymn goes like this, Saved by grace alone, this is all my plea. Jesus died for all, all mankind. Jesus died for me. But Mr. Klein you know, had grown, gone older in years, and his hearing was not quite what it used to be. You know, you understand that, most of you, don't you? I, I do. And as Mr. Klein heard that song, he heard Jesus died for old man Klein. Not all mankind, but Jesus died for old man Klein. And the Spirit of God struck him, touched his heart, and he turned about and he hurried up those church steps and walked into that sanctuary and sat down. The first time for a long, long, long time in his life. And that night he heard the simple message of the gospel and he believed. He understood that Jesus Christ had died for me died for me. We love to quote John 3, 16. But you know, it can be quoted with your name, with my name in the text. For God so loved the world. For God so loved you and me. For God so loved Gary that he gave his one and only son that if Gary, or insert your name there, believes in him, Gary will not perish but Gary will have everlasting life. Once we know in our hearts, in our soul, in our mind, in our spirit, not just in our heads, once we know deep within us that Christ died for me, it can make a radical change in our life. We no longer need live in fear of God, but live in peace with God. We no longer need live in guilt, but understand God's pardon and forgiveness. We no longer need dread God, but learn to really enjoy the things of God. And this is not because of anything that we have done. It's only because what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. Your life can be changed when you understand what Christ has done for you. He died on the cross 
that you might experience the gift of salvation. Paul goes on and he talks about another important change that takes place, can take place in our lives. Your life can change when you understand what Jesus Christ has done in you. You've received, we experienced, we've entered into the experience of salvation, but there's more. There is the new creation that comes along with that. Paul wrote, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. Having your life then radically transformed. Radically transformed. Once there was a man who was on a train traveling across the deserts of Arizona. Deserts of New Mexico and Arizona. And he seemed to be the only person in that car that had their window shade up. And he was staring with rapt attention at the scenery that they were riding by and seemed to be smiling about it all. And finally, one of the other passengers says, excuse me, sir, but I understand. I, I, I see you have a smile on your face. What is there about that particular geography? What is there about the desert that makes you happy? And he said, oh, 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 he said, I sell irrigation equipment. He said, and I look at this and I just think, what a change we could make if we could just get enough water. We could turn this wasteland into a garden, a new creation. St. Augustine was a renowned uh, sinner, uh, uh, a drunkard, and a womanizer were his two great claims to fame until he became converted, until he came to understand Jesus Christ as his Savior. But after that happened, he became a new creation. The story is told that he was walking down the streets in Milan, Italy one day, and he ran into a, a prostitute that he had frequented in the past in his former life. And he saw her, and she saw him, but he ca and she stopped, but he kept right on walking. And she turned and said, Augustine, Augustine, it's me, it's I. And he said, yes, I know, but it's no longer me. I've become a new person. I've become a different person. Paul said it later in his letter to the church at Corinth. He said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come, the old has gone, and a new is there. Life can be totally different. You can live your life totally different. You can become a different person. New interests, new attitudes, new companions, a new use of your money, a new life, a godly life. Paul said, the world has been crucified to me, and I have been crucified to the world. I no longer look at the world and the things of the world the same way I did before because I have become a new creature in Jesus Christ. Our lives can change when we understand what Jesus Christ can do in us. He can make us new creatures. He can radically transform our personality, our interest, our desires. Finally, in this passage, Paul wants us to understand that your life can change when you understand what Jesus Christ can do through you. What he can do in you, what he can do for you, uh, for you and in you, now what he can do through you. He can make you a servant, and you can be involved in service. Paul said, from now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear in my body the marks of Jesus Christ. He said, I've been serving Jesus, and if you look at me, you see a beat-up guy who is bearing the marks of those years of those acts of service for Jesus' name. There was a man who came out of an exclusive, rather exclusive restaurant one evening and walked into the parking lot towards his brand spanking new 
Lexus, we'll call it. We'll say he had a new Lexus. I don't think anybody here in the room this morning is driving a Lexus. I could be wrong. As he approached his car, he saw there was someone bending over his car, and he thought, what the hey? He came up, and he grabbed this person and realized suddenly that it was a, an 11-year-old little boy who was there, and he said, the little boy quickly said, sir, I wasn't, I wasn't hurting your car. I was just studying it. And he said, studying it, what kind of car is this, boy? And he said, well, it's a Lexus. And he said, really? He said, well, what year is it? He says, it's a brand spanking new one. It's a 2018 Lexus. Well, what color is it? He says, it's atomic silver. It wasn't just silver. It wasn't gray. He knew that it was atomic silver. And so the two began to strike up a conversation about the car. And eventually the little boy said, well, tell me, how much did this car cost you? And the guy said, it didn't cost me a dime. It didn't cost me a dime. He said, it didn't cost you. How, how could this car not cost you anything? He said, I didn't buy it. My brother bought it for me, and he gave it to me. And the little boy said, oh, man, I wish that I... And the man said, stop right there. I know what you're going to say. I've heard it many times. You're going to say, I wish that I had a brother like that. And the little boy said, oh, no, 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 sir. He said, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say, I wish I could be a brother like that. I wish that I could be a brother like that who was willing to give and give and give. He understood the importance of having a servant's heart. Jesus said, I didn't come in the world to be served, although we feel like we are serving Jesus, but I came to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. He said, the highest place in my kingdom is held by those who are servants of mine, those who serve. A woman burst into the church on that Sunday morning when the time changes, you know. And as she got there, she was breathless, and she said to the usher who greeted her at the back door, is the service over? And he said, no, ma'am, it's just beginning. The service is just beginning when the worship service is over. Each of us has some kind of service that we can render in Jesus' name in this world in which we live. It may be small. It may seem relatively insignificant. But Jesus talked about the value of just a cup of cold water. Service. What God can do through us, through you, can be amazing. He can use you as a servant. Boasting is natural to people. I, I remember uh, after my uh, freshman year of high school, I told you a couple weeks ago I was going to be reminiscing from time to time. Uh, I don't know how my uh, cousin ever put up with me. I, in, the, in the little town that I grew up, uh, uh, my, my mother's uh, brother and family I lived there, my aunt and uncle and my cousins, and I had a cousin, Mike. And uh, the whole month of June, uh, every time I met my cousin, Mike, I said, hey, Gary Rohde, A in Algebra, a in English, A in science. I just, over and over again, I reminded him I'd gotten an A in algebra and English and science. Man, I was feeling pretty good about myself. I was boasting. We boast about our children and our grandchildren, don't we? Don't we? We boast about our work. We boast about athletic accomplishments. We boast about places we've been and things we've done and people we've met and money that we've earned and material possessions that we own. An American was staying in London, and he was introduced uh, to a, a gentleman from Edinburgh, Scotland. The Scotchman said, what country are ye from? And he said, well, I'm from the greatest country on the face of this earth. And the Scotsman says, that's funny. Ye don't sound like a Scotsman. <laughs> the greatest place on the face of this earth. Paul said... When I boast, may I never boast in anything other than the cross on which Jesus died and the changes that he can make in a person's life. 
Friends, let me close by saying, I want that to be my legacy. I'm not willing to boast about what I've done in the last 38 years of my life. I want to boast about Jesus. He changed my life. He saved my soul. He made me a different person than what I was before. And he has used me. And I'm so grateful for these last four years and these last 38 years. My life was changed because of the cross. I want that to be my, my legacy. And I hope that you know and have experienced and know that you can experience the change that happens when you come to understand the message and the power of the cross and the one who died there for you. Amen.